Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what are imaginary numbers? We're building our way up to complex numbers, and this is the second to last step. So let's start. We know what real numbers are. These are the type of numbers that we're most familiar with. Numbers like 0, 1, 2, negative numbers like negative 3 halves, irrational numbers like pi and e. These are all real numbers, and we have also gone over the imaginary unit, and this is that thing that we call i. And i, of course, has the property that when you square it, you get negative 1. So these are real numbers. This is the imaginary unit. So what are imaginary numbers? I'll start writing over here in red. So imaginary numbers are numbers of the form ri, where i is the imaginary unit, and r is a real number. This notation just means r is an element of the reals, so it means that r is a real number. So if we have any number of the form that's a real number multiplied by the imaginary unit, that is an imaginary number. So these are numbers like 3i, i itself, the imaginary unit, is an imaginary number. Of course, it's just the real number 1 multiplied by the imaginary unit. Pi i is also an imaginary number because pi is a real number, and of course, negative 7.5i is an imaginary number. Even 0 is an imaginary number, because it's equal to 0, which is a real number, multiplied by the imaginary unit. So that does mean that 0 is both a real number and an imaginary number. And that's what imaginary numbers are. They are real number multiples of the imaginary unit. So if that's all you're here for, then we're done with that, but we'll talk a little bit more about how imaginary numbers work now. So if you're adding, subtracting, or multiplying imaginary numbers, it works a lot like dealing with variables. For example, 3x plus 4x, if you had this expression, you would add your like terms and get 7x. And this is really just the distributive property, because what you're doing is factoring an x out of that sum. So you have x times 3 plus 4, and of course if you distributed you'd have 3x plus 4x, and then you just add what's in here in the parentheses, so that becomes x times 7, which is just that 7x. So that's how that works, and it works very similarly for imaginary numbers. So if we have 3i plus 4i, then again, we can just factor out the i, so we have i times 3 plus 4, which is of course equal to 7i, just like it was up here with that x variable. It works a little bit differently when we start multiplying imaginary numbers, so let's use 3x and 4x again. Suppose we're multiplying them. Then of course, we can just multiply 3 by 4, that gives us 12, and then multiply x by x to get x squared. So 3x times 4x is 12x squared. It's similar with imaginary numbers. So if we have 3i times 4i, same thing, we multiply 3 by 4, we get a real number coefficient of 12, and then we multiply i times i, and that's i squared. But of course, up here, x is just some unknown quantity, so we leave it in the form x squared. But we know, more or less, what i is, and we know exactly what i squared is. i squared is equal to negative 1 by definition, so 12i squared is equal to 12 multiplied by negative 1, and that, of course, is equal to negative 12. So if we multiply two imaginary numbers like this, we end up getting a negative real number, which is really quite something. Now remember that i is the positive square root of negative 1. Once we start considering imaginary numbers, which again are real number multiples of the imaginary unit, then we have square roots of all negative numbers. So let's swipe over to the next page and look at an example. So if we wanted to know the square root of negative 9, well, before we had i introduced to us, we wouldn't know what this is. This is undefined because you can't take the square root of a negative number. But if we're considering i, then we can rewrite this as negative 1 times 9, because of course negative 1 times 9 is equal to negative 9. And so then this is equal to the square root of negative 1 multiplied by the square root of 9. And we know what both of these quantities are. We know that the square root of negative 1 is i, and we know that the square root of 9 is 3. And remember that the square root symbol, just on its own, only refers to the positive square root of negative 1. And we consider i with a real number coefficient of 1 
to be the positive square root of negative 1. But the positiveness there is really only referring to the real number coefficient. But regardless, we know this is equal to 3i. So now we're able to take the square root of a negative number. And in general, the square root of a negative number is just going to be the square root of the absolute value of that number multiplied by i. So for example, the square root of negative 25 is equal to the square root of the absolute value of negative 25 times i. The absolute value of negative 25 is of course just 25. The square root of that is five, so this is equal to five times i. And now you can really begin to see the power of imaginary numbers. Now let's erase some of this stuff and look at one more thing real quick before we go. So you might recognize a line like this. Let me put an arrow over here and an arrow over here. And this is just the real number line. It's got all real numbers on it, so we've got zero, and then off in the positive direction to the right, you've got numbers like one, two, pi, and so on. And then in the negative direction to the left, we've got things like negative one, uh, negative two, we've got stuff like negative 3.5, it's a line with all the real numbers. In the same way, we have an imaginary number line. So let me draw that here with the arrows on either side, and this is the imaginary number line. Now the imaginary number line is just like the real number line, but now every real number is being multiplied by i. So we've got zero, which is the same as zero i, and then of course we have stuff like one i, two i, say 4.3i, and then of course in the negative direction you've got stuff like negative i, stuff like negative 2.2i, negative pi i, all that good stuff. So it's the same as the real numbers, except every number now is being multiplied by the imaginary unit. And I only bring this imaginary number line up because it will be useful to be familiar with it once we start talking about complex numbers. So get ready for that. That'll be a fun time. But I hope this video helped you understand what imaginary numbers are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. Please excuse me, I'm just acting dumb Please don't you mind me while I'm asking stupid questions But I find it funny Cause every one of them relates to you It's not coincidental